Hey everyone, thank you for tuning into this video. Uh, in today's episode, we will delve into the realm of Middle-earth and explore the forthcoming legendary creatures from the Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-earth set. Now, I'm excited to present some of my personal selection of creatures that I believe would make excellent choices for constructing an EDH deck. But for this particular episode, I won't be solely considering the strength or power level of the legendary creatures in the set. Um, instead, my main objective will be to highlight the ones that align with my personal playstyle and are bound to bring joy and excitement to the game the way I see it. Okay, so I've chosen my top 5 legendary creatures, but before we get to that, uh, I just want to share first a couple of honorable mentions. So first off, I have um, Mary, Esquire of Rohan, and Pippin, Guard of the Citadel. So I think these two cards are very, very, um, you know, simple but very effective. I just wished that they had the partner with mechanic, because if Mary and Pippin, you know, are my partner commanders, I think it would have been a very fun Jeskai commander, because I think they kind of complement each other's ability. Another creature that uh, is an honorable mention for me is Witch King of Angmar. So I really like this card because it's a free discard outlet from the command zone. Well, not really free because you have to cast him for five mana, but, you know, discard a card for free and then it protects itself. It gains indestructible until end of turn. You have to tap it though, but that's okay because you just need the discard outlet. So you can have your Madness Commander. You have a bunch of reanimator strategies that you can use with this creature. You know, I really like it and really looking forward to creating a deck using this as my commander. All right, at number five, I have Bilbo, Retired Burglar. So whenever it enters or leaves the battlefield, the ring will tempt me. And then whenever it deals combat damage to a player, I get to create a treasure token. So the way I see this commander, I think it's a very good blink um, commander. You know, I just have to cast my Ghostly Flicker or pair it up with a Dead Eye Navigator. And I can I can, I'll be able to trigger it multiple times until I get all the abilities of the ring. So making it, you know, really a good value commander out of the command zone plus there's a bonus that i get to create a treasure token so you know if you want to go through the treasure uh token route that's okay as well but for me basically it's a great value out of the command zone um, i'm right i'm not really looking to hit 21 commander damage using bilbo but just the value it gives me out of the command zone plus it's only three mana so it's really easy to cast really easy to recast uh, so that's my number five commander for this set all right, next, uh, at number four, um, I have Aragorn the Uniter. So this is a four-color commander with a bunch of abilities. So from a certain point of view, it kind of looks like it's an OP commander because you have access to four colors, then each color has its different trigger. Um, I especially like the red or the green part because uh, I think they're really aggressive uh, abilities, especially if you're using this for dual commander. For 1v1, you know, dealing three damage and giving a creature plus four plus four, to get that can easily get out of hand but i kind uh for me i like it because of the flexibility it offers you know i can go the uh, tokenator route i can go the top deck manipulation route because i have scry 2 or i can even make it a, you know a fast voltron as well because i can keep on giving it plus four plus four by just using a couple of free green spells so i like it because of the flexibility i'm i'm not seeing it as a very broken commander yet maybe it is maybe i'm just not seeing it it could be a broken commander but you know uh, for me the flexibility i'm looking forward to making uh, either a tokenator or a voltron um, commander with this one um, access to four colors is just a bonus for me um, it's not really that difficult to cast a four color commander these days you know you, when you have green and you have access to treasures it's really easy but you know um, i'm willing to give this one a chance i think the flavor is kind of good but you know, I think it's a strong card. It's definitely not a weak card, a 5544 five, mana. So Aragorn is my number four. Okay, at number three, I have Gimli, Mournful Avenger. So, oh man, the design of this card is just so sad. You know, I'm not sure if Gimli deserves this kind of ability, but from a commander's perspective, or from a commander um, deck perspective, and I think this is a very good card because he gets big easy. So uh, whenever another creature you control dies, put a counter on Gimli. If it's the third time, it uh, has to resolve, you know, Gimli fights another creature. So it's also a very good control commander. But the best part about this um, card for me is the fact that it can protect itself. 
Now, as long as two or more creatures died under your control this turn, it becomes indestructible. So again, though with a bunch of sac self-sacrificing creatures in red and green, then you can add a couple of sac outlets, maybe like um, Ashnod's Altar or Firection Altar. You know, you get to easily get um, those protective abilities. Uh, he becomes indestructible. You can give more plus one plus one counters. He becomes out of control really easy letting you deal uh, 21 commander damage out of nowhere. So for me, I think this is a very, very good Voltron commander and really one of my favorite color combinations, red-green. So I'm looking forward to building this deck. All right, at number two, I have Boromir, Warden of the Tower. But first things first, they messed up the flavor text on this one. One does not simply miss the flavor text when it comes to Boromir. Man, Sean Bean will be mad at <laughs> the flavor text. But looking past the flavor text, I think this is a very you know, simple but very powerful card. Um, the first ability, whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. So this is a mono-white Linvala for me. I'm kind of seeing if you have Knowledge Pool and Omen Machine, you can practically lock the game. You know, it gives you th that kind of advantage uh, because nobody can play, in, uh, play any spells anymore. So it's a stacks commander. You can put it as your commander, put it in the 99 as part of your stacks deck. So it's really cool. But another bonus for this card is its sacrifice ability. Yes, yeah, so, uh, your creature is gained indestructible until end of turn. But if this is your commander and you find a way to create an infinite source of white mana, it's really easy to get the ring to tempt you, to get all the abilities needed, you know, just... You know, by uh, casting and recasting Boromir, sacrifice it until you you know you get all of the abilities of the rings. So that's why I like this card. But again, they messed up the flavor text. For Boromir, one does not simply miss the flavor text. All right? You have to go to Mordor. I don't know. The flavor text. Okay, now at number one, my favorite card so far from this deck is Sauron the Dark Lord. The abilities are just insane. First, it has this ward ability. It's really hard to meet, to, to meet that because you have to sacrifice a legendary artifact or a legendary creature. Most of the time, that might be an opponent's commander. And then whenever an opponent casts a spell, a mass orcs one, that's whenever an opponent casts a spell. Around the table, if you have three opponents, you know it will trigger each time they cast a spell. So either you keep on getting... a Tokens that you can keep on sacrificing to your sacrifice outlet, or you get this very, very big orc army creature. And then if that orc army creature attacks, it will trigger the next ability. Whenever an army you control deals combat damage to a player, the ring tempts you. So it's really easy to get all of the abilities of the rings. Just imagine if you have an army um, tribal deck. So it's really easy to get that ring tempts you. It will trigger the next ability, which is whenever the ring tempts you, you may discard your hand. And if you do draw four cards, that is just insane card selection. You know, in EDH, discarding your hand is not even a drawback anymore. You know, you can have a lots of value uh, whenever you're discarding your hand. And then you keep on drawing four cards. You can, you know, you can sift through your library really easy. So all of his abilities are really complementing each other. On their own, they're very strong as well. Plus, you have a 7-6 body for your commander. So that's just three attack to deal 21 commander damage. So this is a really... Uh, Amazing card. This is my favorite so far. I'm looking forward to build a deck around this specific legend. And uh, it's in Greek Scholars, making it really strong. So this is my favorite. Waiting for it to happen. You know, waiting for, for me to get a copy. And this is probably the first commander deck that I'll be building out of the Lord of the Rings set. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. Those are my top five legendary creatures from Lord of the Rings set that I'm really looking forward to um, build some commander decks with. So uh, um, they're not necessarily the strongest in the set. I don't see them as the strongest commanders, but they kind of fit my playstyle. Those are my favorites so far. And hopefully I can uh, create a couple of good decks for you. Uh, no, I'll be putting them on this uh, this channel soon once I get the full spoilers, I get to play test some of them. Um, you know, you might have uh, your, uh, you know, your preferred commanders as well. If you do, let me know. You know, share me your thoughts. Let me know which ones, um, which other um, legendary creatures from this set you're looking, really looking forward to, or if you have any ideas on how to build these five uh, legends. If you have other, um, you know, ideas on how to create uh, great or fun decks with, let me know. Share them in the comments. Would really appreciate that. Um, once again, thank you very much for joining me in this episode. I know it. 
I think this is the longest video so far I've made in this channel. It's kind of weird because uh, the name of the channel is Quick Deck Text, but this one's not really quick. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, soon, if I can create deck decks for these Lord of the Rings characters, uh, you know, I hope you enjoy those too. So once again, this is Hans. Thank you for joining me. Have a great night. Have a great day uh, wherever you are right now. You know, you know, keep safe. And thank you. Catch you in my next deck deck.